I'm about to climb 265 feet to truly feel the power of wind. Yep, I'm on top of a wind turbine. Wind is one of the oldest renewable energy sources, but our ability to harness the wind has come a long way since the first electricity generating wind turbine that was built here in Ohio in 1888. Wind energy is the largest source of renewable energy in the US. In 2021, it made up about 9% of the US's electricity supply, and the goal is to increase that number to 20% by 2030. In other countries such as Germany, Spain, and the UK, wind energy already accounts for around 20% of their energy demand. The wind sector has grown so much that it's claimed now to be cheaper than nuclear, coal, and even natural gas. So, I want to know, is wind energy truly cheaper than traditional energy solutions? Is it more sustainable than other renewable energy? And can we continue to scale it up? Let's find out! In this episode of Can It See the Planet, I'm visiting One Energy, a wind farm in Finley, Ohio, to climb a wind turbine, learn more about the impacts of wind energy, its challenges. We aren't perfect yet, but we're way ahead of everybody else. And ultimately find out if wind energy can save the planet. Presented by Honda. It's easy to understand how wind energy works. The wind blows, the turbines turn, they generate electricity, and that gets sent into the grid. Simple, right? By some estimates, a single onshore wind turbine has the potential to generate more than 6 million kilowatt hours over the course of a year. That's enough to supply 1,500 average households with power. Estimates suggest that wind energy helps avoid 329 million metric tons of CO2 emissions annually in the US. That's like taking 71 million cars off the road. As I mentioned in the intro, wind energy has come a long way. In fact, there are now three kinds of wind turbines. Utility-based, which is the wind energy consumers like you and I use from the grid. Distributed, this type of wind turbine is more for private lands and businesses that connect to a wind turbine that is off-grid. And offshore, this wind energy comes from turbine farms in the ocean that also powers the grid. Now, I don't mean to belittle solar and hydro, but wind turbines can operate in all climate conditions. Wind is also a booming sector for business, and that's because wind is cheaper and more reliable than coal and gas. According to a Bloomberg report, onshore wind and solar projects cost about 40% less than traditional coal and gas plants built from scratch. Reports show how new onshore wind projects cost about $46 per megawatt hour, while new coal-fired plants cost $74, gas plants cost $81, and nuclear can cost up to $189 per megawatt hour. To see all this in action and learn more about the evolution of this technology, I'm at One Energy in Finley, Ohio. But before I got to climbing the 263-foot wind turbine, I had a chance to catch up with Jeremy Kent, the CEO of One Energy. Jeremy's company produces distributed wind energy since it installs turbines in the backyards of big companies like Whirlpool. Can you tell me a little bit more about One Energy and what kind of wind energy you produce? We take utility scale turbines and we install them to directly power factories. Is it cheaper? Is it more reliable? Wind is the cheapest over 20 years because you don't keep buying fuel. The fuel is free. That's what makes renewables truly valuable. And so actually being able to say to an end use customer, here's a 20 year fixed rate where the cost of power is not gonna change no matter what, is something that's game changing. Wind might be cheaper than fossil fuel sourced energy, but it doesn't come without its own challenges. There's a huge education problem with wind. The wind industry has done a great job of saying, we have these super cool, great products that are completely safe. Now, stay back a thousand feet, and that doesn't exactly convey a message of being safe. The truth is wind is the safest form of mainstream energy in existence in the United States today. Getting that message out, inviting kids to come to our factories, inviting concern of legislators and stakeholders, those are all the things we do to say, look, it's an amazing form of power generation, and it's not scary. Then there's the issue of transmission lines in the US, according to Jeremy. The problem is getting the power from where you have land to where you need power. The only reason we have offshore is it's very hard to get a new transmission line built from North Dakota to New York. That's the problem you see throughout this industry. However, Jeremy believes distributed wind could help solve that issue and reduce individual carbon footprints along the way. Why do I have to go through 500 miles of transmission line when you can go to most of the manufacturers in the country and produce that right on site and power the factory directly? It bypasses the entire system. It bypasses all the copper that has to be in those lines, all the aluminum in those lines, all the different transmission lines, switch gears, interstate issues. Those wind turbines help power that factory and the cables run directly underground and right into it. As for the future of wind, Jeremy says there's a lot of room to grow wind projects in middle America. 
There are roughly 53,000 large industrial facilities in the country, and our studies tell us that somewhere between a quarter and a third of those factories can do on-site wind at the very large scale like we're talking about. I think that wind is a tool that in some cases can get you 70 or 80% of the way there, but you need other tools to get the rest of the way there. Awesome. Let's get on up to one of those then. Let's go for a climb. <laughs> All right, now that we have our gear and neon bright shirts on, we are ready to climb. We just did the first step and it already feels like a workout. Whoa, am I tired? I'm sitting down, so this is my vulnerable moment. This is now the diary of me slowly breaking down. I made it. Not scary at all. Now we're heading down. Wow, that was so much fun. While I catch my breath, let's take an ad break and hear from our sponsor. Before we get to our conclusion, I'd like to take a moment to thank Honda for sponsoring this episode. One of the nice things about wind energy is, of course, it generates power whenever the wind blows, but that energy is completely green. Wind power is converting energy in the air into electricity. We partner with a company called RWE because we recognize the potential to generate renewable energy. I was excited to go to Boiling Springs and see it firsthand myself. When I walked up to it, I felt like a little kid staring up at a skyscraper again. It's just this massive structure. And then you realize that that turbine on the top, it's actually the size of an Odyssey minivan standing on top of this massive steel post. And the scale is pretty overwhelming. The more of wind energy we can procure, we see a pathway to having 100% renewable energy at our factories. That means carbon that doesn't end up being emitted into the sky and affecting our climate. Since Honda chose to invest in the Boiling Springs wind farm, we've seen that there's more interest in renewable energy. We will continue to pursue wind projects, but we're not putting all of our eggs in the wind basket. We're also looking at solar and hydrogen fuel cells and some other options as well. Now, back to the episode. Here's what we learned so far. Number one, wind energy can significantly reduce CO2 emissions. Number two, wind energy is cheaper than nuclear, coal, and natural gas. And number three, wind energy projects already exist all over the world and are currently expanding. So, can wind energy save the planet? Yes. Wind energy is already a successful solution around the world and being used to decarbonize entire countries. Denmark, for example, aims to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 70% by 2030 and 100% by 2050 by using onshore wind energy in combination with other green technologies and energy sources. The US has also pledged to build enough offshore wind by 2030 to power 10 million homes with clean energy and help cut 78 million metric tons of CO2 emissions. There are some asterisks to the solution though. Wind energy still has some setbacks like challenges with recycling the blades, bats and birds flying into the blades, noise pollution, and space constraints. Then there's the shortage of terrestrial critical minerals used in wind turbine construction. There are plans to expand the mining frontier to the deep ocean to obtain minerals such as nickel, which is needed for wind turbine construction. However, further exploiting the marine environment will only jeopardize the health of the fragile deep sea environment, further compromising the health of our oceans. Recycling the blades is a challenge. However, there are solutions. Researchers at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory created a thermoplastic resin that allows wind turbine blades to be recycled at the end of their life. There's also a group of engineers who have repurposed blades to build bridges in Ireland and Poland. And when it comes to the environmental impact, a 2013 report estimated that in 2009, wind turbines killed approximately 20,000 birds in the US. But that is a drop in the bucket compared to nuclear plants, which killed about 330,000, and fossil fuel power plants, which killed more than 14 million birds that same year. As for there not being enough space to install them, well, in the US, we're not lacking for open land. The Department of Energy is investing with research and funds in offshore wind projects to help meet scaling goals and emission reduction requirements. At the end of the day, a wind turbine like this might be daunting, but just remember it's safe and it could provide clean, reliable, and cheap energy for your home. All right, now, so how, how do I get down from here? Because I'm about to pull a Lady Gaga at the Super Bowl. 